Okay, here we go. Another example. This would be uh, example 3 in 6.3 in your textbook. Okay, so we're going to do 4 sine theta cosine theta equals root 3. Okay, 4 sine theta cosine theta. Uh, so again, right, you really want to get this in terms of the same trig function if you can. Uh, fortunately, this looks an awful lot like one of your double angle identities, right? Remember that sine 2 theta is the same as 2 sine theta cosine theta. Well, here we have 4 sine theta cosine theta. You might be tempted to think that that's sine 4 theta, but that's not quite right. Okay. Uh, sine 4 theta, uh, it, well, it's different, uh, right? Sine 4, th just as an aside, sine 4 theta would be uh, sine of 2 times 2 theta. So that would be 2 sine 2 theta, cosine 2 theta, okay? Which you can see pretty clearly is not the same thing as 4 sine theta, cosine theta. You could, you could continue simplifying it. You could use some more double angle identities for sine and cosine, but you're not going to end up with 4 sine theta, cosine theta, all right? Uh, but it is similar to uh, to that double angle identity. In particular, I could think of it like this. This is 2 times 2 sine theta cosine theta. Ah, and there, there we have sine 2 theta, right? That's sine 2 theta. So we can say this is uh, sine 2 theta. And this 2 comes along for the right, right? So we get 2 times 2 sine theta equals root 3. Now we have this thing written in terms of just a single trig function. We can solve for that trig function by dividing by 2. And now we're ready to apply our handy dandy rule, right? We can say, all right, if sine 2 theta is root 3 over 2, then that must mean 2 theta is sine inverse of root 3 over 2 plus 2n pi, or 2 theta is pi minus sine inverse of root 3 over 2 plus 2n pi. Uh, okay, what's uh, what's sine inverse of root 3 over 2? I'm thinking it's going to be pi over 3, all right? Pi minus pi over 3. This is 3 pi over 3 minus 1 pi over 3, so that's 2 pi over 3. We still have to solve for theta, of course, so let's divide through by 2. Ooh, okay, so here we'd get pi over 3, right? Okay, notice that, you know, we divided this term by 2 as well, right? Okay, uh, so if I'm trying to describe all of my solutions, <clears throat> all of my solutions would be uh, pi over 6 plus n pi, or pi over 3 plus n pi, where n is an integer. If I wanted to describe the solutions that live in the interval 0 to 2 pi, well, here when I plug in 0, I get pi over 6. When I plug, plug in 1, I get 7 pi over 6. When I plug in 2, I've gone too far. 
Here, when I plug in 0, I get pi over 3. When I plug in 1, I get 4 pi over 3. When I plug in 2, I've gone too far. And there are the solutions that live between 0 and 2 pi. Okay, I have one more example for you. I'm, I'm tempted to go on, but I think it's going to make the video way too long. So let me start a new video. This last example is, oh, it's kind of a doozy. Let's take a look at it.